Guys, what Jack Smith just did, boy oh boy, I cannot believe how brilliant it is. By the end of this video, by the end of this, as we go through it together, you will have a smile on your face from ear to ear and a brain exploding with how brilliant Jack just was. In his move to not only neutralize and eliminate Judge Cannon from the equation, but also terrify Trump and convey to the world just how dangerous Donald Trump is. Hit the like and subscribe button as we follow one of the most brilliant maneuvers in modern legal history. Because when we saw that recording come out last night, it achieved an objective that I recognized right away, and many of you did as well, but also an additional objective that no one else is talking about right now, that very few people at least are talking about, but which nails Donald Trump and makes it clear that the case is moving to New Jersey, guys. That Cannon has been cut out, she's been tossed into the trash bin, and we are going down the Jersey Turnpike. That's what's happening all of a sudden. And if you watch all of this, it'll become clear. First, there's a real outline of the danger of Donald Trump and what he's done. Jack making that clear is critical because as we've said millions of times, at least it feels like millions of times, it's not politics what Jack is doing, but there's a political environment that this case exists within. And he needs to be extra sure, not only that the facts are on his side, which they are, one, one million percent, but that the people of the United States will understand that there is a not only technical violation of the law, but a violation of basic human decency and of the Constitution and all of that from Donald Trump. And Jack made that clear. The first part of this, essential, is all of the people noting how Donald Trump really ruined himself and put Americans at risk before getting to Jack's Jersey move. Pack your suitcases, guys. We're leaving Cannon and we're going to Jersey. Two things that stand out to me, other than the staffer laughing makes my blood yeah. boil as someone yeah. who used to handle classified secrets. War plans are among the most classified secrets. And the Iranian people are great people. We stand in solidarity with them. The Iranian regime is a rogue regime and one of the most dangerous on the planet. Uh -huh. They've directed our U.S. service members to be killed abroad. Um, they recently, a, a Iranian-backed official, supported a U.S. journalist, uh, Masih al najad to be assassinated on U.S. Yeah. soil. Yeah. Luckily, luckily, we broke up that plot. I I say this because if these documents got into the wrong hands, American lives could be lost. They're in the wrong hands. But then, We're well, exactly. The hands. But you even know, worse, why was he doing it is a question. Yeah. Because he has a little tiff with my former boss, Chairman Mark Milley, a patriot, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and he wanted to be like, look, Mark Milley was wrong. Look at our, look at our, you know, war plans and secrets. He cared more about winning some little spat with Mark Milley than protecting and U.S. national security. Why do you think, and I, I keep on asking this question, why do you think he took those particular documents because he returned 197 documents he was not charged with that if you return them you don't get charged it's just simple Even they were the juiciest simple. like they had the most stuff in them i think I, 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 allegedly is it possible that he thought that he could sell them that he thought he could well leverage everything about them? him is making money so exactly. why not exactly yeah no. like we're, i'm not saying it everybody no, i, I don't want to get sued but to be honest just, i wonder that was why? some of the documents reportedly about the saudis as well because he obviously has financial as interest and in like yes. the golf tour i don't want to speculate too much but that is i think what this prosecution is going to have to go into is yeah. he's already broken enough laws whether there's intent in you know a and trying to undermine our new our U.S. national security behind it, but I mean that's something that what's the why? To. What's the why? And you well, never have to prove that. the why to, to prove this case. You don't have to prove intent, but juries are going to want to know why did he do it? He's going. He's a grifter. He's a grifter. I mean, short of he's this judge fundamentally it. screwing up the case, I don't see how he gets less than five to ten years. He literally in this Lock one. Lock him up clip, already. Lock him up. The info, he knows the info. Lock him up. He admits he knows the information is classified. Yeah. He discusses the contents of classified information with people without security clearances and then acknowledges he can't declassify since he's not president. That's the whole it's, case. It's a cut and dried case. He has no defense, which is why I said a couple weeks ago, he is ripe for a plea. And I think I asked mm -hmm. you this a couple weeks ago. Will, is he someone who would take a plea but that plea would have to include jail time. Well, the plea you get the sense from uh, talking to people in Trump's legal orbit that they have a sense of how they counter this from a defensive perspective in the courts. 
I think they're going to suggest that he was simply acknowledging what reality was, but that he wasn't suggesting that. I, you know, I, I think I think they're going to come up with all kinds of things that they're going to say about this tape, uh, and, and I'm not sure how much of it is going to be something they believe, or how much of it is going to be, you know, what relates to previous things Trump has said. You know, they they knew this tape existed back in March, or some of them did back in March um, after it was, uh, you know, raised when Margot Martin, an aide to Trump, uh, was interviewed at the grand jury, and then her her you know tapes and so forth were, were subpoenaed later but this has not been a cause of extensive alarm for some of Trump's advisors even though mm -hmm. others speaking more candidly acknowledge this is a problem you mentioned it hasn't been a cause of alarm for some of his advisors what about his lawyers I mean several of whom have left now his legal orbit for, for perhaps for other reasons but how do the lawyers who are not in the orbit anymore feel about this well, without getting into specifics of just sort of narrowing down who is saying what, there are some people around Trump who are pretty candid, or, you know, who have been or are around Trump who are pretty candid that this is just not a not a good fact set for him. It doesn't mean that they won't find a defense for it. It doesn't mean that they won't argue, you know, all kinds of other things at trial or even before a trial, such as, you know, a selective prosecution. They'll try to get, you know, notes taken by one of Trump's lawyers that are in the indictment out. But the tape is, um, the tape is a, a pretty specific piece of evidence, and they know it. And of course, we learned just in the last week when discovery was released to the Trump attorneys that there were tapes, plural. Uh, and, and as you've reported and as CNN has reported, several of these conversations between Trump and all kinds of people who came through his world were recorded by his staff intentionally so that he could keep tabs on what was said. How big of a concern is there that this is not the only uh, audio tape to be concerned about for Trump? Well, look, they're going to, they, they have the, they have the discovery, so they now have the ability to go through it. But, you know, I, what I, what has been said to me by several people is that this tape is the, the, the most damning piece of evidence that they know of existing in this case. It doesn't mean that there are not other things that are very problematic for him. Um, you know, I, I am guessing that some of these tapes are other book interviews or other interviews he sat for. Um, this is, this is very specific. And this was just, you know, again, to your point about the fact that he knew his aides were taped. His, his, his aides taped these meetings. It's not like this was a secret recording. I think that's right, Andrea. And the audio tells a much deeper story than just seeing yeah. the words on the printed page. So this is powerful evidence. I think this is a smoking gun, frankly, when played for a jury. And you hear the former president talking about secret documents, documents that were prepared for me by the military. And then he says, it's so cool almost as though he's someone who, who found himself caught up in the high access that he had as president and couldn't let go of it down the road. This is the sort of evidence that convinces a jury that a defendant had the state of mind the government has to prove in order to get a conviction. And let me just ask you one follow-up question here uh, on the legal matter, because one of the things he complained about to an audience was, you know, they're accusing me of espionage, like a spy, you know, a former president, I'm paraphrasing here. And in fact, they have not accused him of spying or of espionage as we know it. It's the Espionage Act, which is to retain documents and not turn them back, which is very clearly the case <laughs> by his own words here on tape. That's absolutely right. So look, Congress has naming rights. Congress is the ones who, who, the one that gets to name the laws that it passes. And this is a large act called the Espionage Act. It encompasses conduct that we would traditionally think of as espionage as spying, but it also encompasses retention of documents, classified material, national defense information that someone is not entitled to possess. And Trump was not singled out here. People are charged under this statute routinely, including two former CIA directors and people who've been charged within the last year with retention of documents. And the other thing is that he was not charged with disclosure, even though it's very clear that he's showing it to people. So that's something that they could hold in abeyance. Plus, as sort of a break glass if the Florida judge were to dismiss some of the dismiss the whole case, this is a count that they could bring in New Jersey, a, a perhaps more favorable venue. Uh, John
Uh, Andrew, I, I want to go to that point that Rachel raised when we were uh, talking about this, which is a point you have originally raised uh, publicly, the question of a possible separate prosecution of Donald Trump in New Jersey for what we just heard on that tape, which occurred in New Jersey. Yeah, so one of the things that Ryan Goodman, a professor at NYU, uh, one of my colleagues there, and I were struck by is that when you read the indictment, there's a information about so much information about Mar-a-Lago, and then you hear about documents being taken to Bedminster, and the story stops. There, there's sort of a, this sort of like hole where you sort of wonder why is there no more. Um, being told other than two instances of dissemination that occurred at Bedminster. Now, there could be various reasons. One of the things we posited was that it could lead to separate charges with respect to Bedminster, particularly since they knew that there was a good shot that they would get Judge Cannon in Florida. Were they thinking of this as a backup plan? The other is that they have venue issues or they thought if things still go well in Florida, this is something that can certainly be brought up at sentencing upon conviction of the former president. In other words, you don't have to be charged with it in order for a judge to take it into account in sentencing. But it really is a possibility that it could happen. And it is a possible backup plan if they were to get really slowed down by adverse rulings and delay by Judge Cannon and appeals by Judge Cannon to the 11th Circuit, to the Supreme Court, um, that they have this other off-ramp with respect to what appears quite now to be very, very strong proof of not just retention, but dissemination in another district. In my hands. So you can see that, right? It really demonstrates how dangerous all of this is, but it gets to the point there where Jack has made a move either to get rid of Cannon or to have that as an insurance, or even if the case goes well in Florida to use this info against Trump for a second additional charge or as part of the sentencing. Because make no mistake, up until this moment, because again, we only thought this tape existed. We didn't know 100%. We really didn't know until we could hear it, right? Hearing is believing in this case. This is the evidence to Jersey. Up until this point, the links to Jersey were tenuous and mostly hypothetical. We knew the crimes took place in D.C. with regard to J6. We knew the crimes took place in Florida with regard to the retention of documents. We knew that, the, the photos of the bathroom. But this is Trump at Jersey waving around a classified document. This is it. At Jersey. And that document's never been returned, even though they asked for it. So, the crimes happen there too. And what they're saying is, this is the way you can get rid of Cannon and move the case to Jersey. Or, have a second case in Jersey, or use this against Trump. It is a brilliant move by Jack. He has not only shown the world that his case has value, and he's also demonstrated that if need be, Cannon is gone. 